What did you do for July 4th, Chris? Oh, uh, I went into a birthday party for a dog. That's what I did. All right, now start the music. <laughs> It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck and some that do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, welcome to a new episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And... Hi. I'm Mark. Mark is with us again today, guys. You guys asked for him back. You guys said if you didn't bring back Mark, you were never going to listen again. So we brought him back. And for some reason, he's like watching porn at the same time he's talking to us. I don't know what's going on. I'm not watching porn at the moment. However, <laughs> if you're on TikTok, you, are, you can follow my live stream on TikTok Live. However, if you're on YouTube, you can watch the show there on movies that don't suck and some that do. I'm I'm like the Rick, the ravishing Rick Rude of <laughs> fat white guys being on the internet. We're also on the, I'm in uh, two places at once. Is it live or is it Memorex, Neil? Neil, we're on X too, right? Yeah, we're, Neil, we're not live on X as well, right? Yeah, we're, yeah on. we're on X, we're on Facebook, we're on your Facebook, or uh, Movies Which, Don't Suck Facebook, my Facebook, uh, YouTube, and we're on trip, uh, Pornhub. Twitch, are we, we are, Twitch? Are we on Twitch still? Pornhub Live! Okay. No, I'm just kidding. No, we're just we on the X. NWO <laughs> of internet streaming shows. We are on every, we are on TikTok, yeah, we're brother. everywhere you can stream. God damn it. Yeah, fucking A. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we are reviewing two movies that are out there in the world of movie view pleasure. First, the long awaited after two decades, three decades, how many decades? Three 1994 decades? was Beverly Hills Cop 3. Yes, yeah, so yeah, 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 94. 20 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the long awaited, the one we've all been waiting for for decades, the one, the only Beverly Hills Cop. Axel F featuring the one, the only, one of the biggest comedy geniuses of the 1980s, Eddie Murphy. I'm Sergeant Taggart, and this is my partner, Detective Rosewood. You always treat visitors from out of town like this? Why didn't you identify yourself as a police officer when you were arrested? Because I was minding my own business. Where the fuck do you guys get off on arresting somebody for getting thrown out of a window? We have six witnesses that say you broke in and started tearing up the place, then jumped out the window. And you guys believe that? What the fuck are you, cops or doormen? We're more likely to believe an important local businessman than a foul-mouthed jerk from out of town. foul mouth? Fuck you, man. <laughs> See, watch your mouth. Hey, man, don't square off on me with some bullshit. You want to start some static? Hey, don't push me. Fuck you, man. Tagger. Yeah, from Beverly Hills Cop 1, yeah, 1984. Yes, him and John Aston. I thought that was, that was the best way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what else do you know John Ashton from? <laughs> like, <laughs> literally, like, I think he was, like, in one, like, uh, episode of, like, NYPD Blue. Like, yeah, yeah. I ago. honestly, when I was a kid, thought they grew John Ashton out of a pot of dirt made of surly white men. <laughs> I, I had no idea what else <laughs> We we need an also, old white um, racist cop here. Just pluck one out of the out of the plant. Also, one of the great legends from the '80s who's in this movie, the one and only Judge Reinhold. We found out your wife is worth quite a bit more than ten thousand. What do you mean? We changed our minds. We've upped the ransom. To what? We're up to two million dollars. Two million dollars? Are you out of your fucking mind? Where'd you get an incredible figure like that? Oh, you'd be surprised at the quality and quantity of information a lit cigarette can provide. Ah! What else? Shem! He's got rare gems in the safe! Oh, oh Slam, forgive me! What kind of gems? How many? I don't know! There you go. Was that real, people? Ruthless people, because yeah. I feel like everybody knows Judge Reinhold from, like, you know, Fast Time at Ridgemont High or Beverly Hills Cop. But, like, that is one of my favorite Judge Reinhold movies of all time. Is Ruthless Jonas, people. watch Ruthless People. <laughs> when, when watch. Watch. 
done. When we're done. When we're done. Uh, also in this movie, Taylor Page. Same bitch that want to smile in your face. Be the same bitch that gonna come for you later. Period. Oh God. Oh God. Like why you on my Twitter? Why you on my Facebook? Why you on my Tumblr? Why are you DMing me? Sis, why are you tagging me sis. in photos? You don't even fuck with me. Sis. Let me know. Sis. Let me know. Yes, Let me sis. Know. You gonna get that from Zola? What the fuck are you doing with with? What are you doing, Neil? Sometimes I'm just more important, guys, yeah. and it's just we just gotta. <laughs> but yeah, that's from Zola, a twenty four movie, which yeah. that's why I did oh, that one. Because... Where I knew her from. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, also, uh, in this movie, um, the guy who had to suffer the wrath of the Nolan verse, Mister Joseph Gordon Levitt. Sin City's where you go in with your eyes open. Or you don't come out at all. But a city's like a woman or a casino. Somebody's gonna win. And it's gonna be me. It's the kind of place your father doesn't want to talk about. But where I come from, father's a thing no one seems to be able to find. Yeah, from Sin City. Oh, from Sin City. That's not from Sin City. Uh huh. That's a dame to kill for. Jesus what is, what's Christ! Look the the really? <laughs> in the movie names, right? Him. You're on a movie <laughs> podcast. You, know, you're missing, you got one person. You got one person. <laughs> and the one, the only, the greatest actor in the history of man, Mister Kevin Bacon. And there was a time for this law, but not anymore. See, this is our time to dance. It is our way of of celebrating life. It's the way it was in the beginning. It's the way it's always been. That's the way it should be now. Kevin Bacon, Footloose. Now we gotta cut now. Footloose. <laughs> Foot you know why I play? You know why? You know, shoes. Sorry. Do you know why I use that clip? Because the Bible's in it. No, no. <laughs> Footloose was the movie that was going against Beverly Hills Cop, mm. the original, and the movie I theater. That. Mm. Yeah, that was the same year. Was it was Footloose and Beverly what Hills? What a Cop year in film! Beverly Hills Cop and <laughs> Footloose. I'm the theater at the same time, and yeah. it's, uh, that's a, a bunch of the actors in Beverly Hills Cop acts fully. Now, the second movie we did this year a week uh, for some. Fucking reason, Fuck you know. uh, kinds of kind, Fuck you. kinds of kinds <laughs> like wait till I get to this movie, man. Woo, it's gonna be a fun time today. <laughs> anyway, uh, the one, the only Emma Stone. You are not doing this for the sake of art. You are doing this because you want to feel relevant again. Well, guess what? There is an entire world out there where people fight to be relevant every single day, and you act like it doesn't exist. Things are happening in a place that you ignore. A place that, by the way, has already forgotten about you. I mean, who the fuck are you? You hate bloggers. You mock Twitter. You don't even have a Facebook page. You're the one who doesn't exist. You're doing this because you're scared to death, like the rest of us, that you don't matter. And you know what? You're right. You don't. It's not important, okay? You're not important. Get used to it. From Birdman. Birdman. Birdman! Sploosh, dude. Sploosh. Yeah. Right. Na, 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 na. I always love Birdman. Um, then uh the guy that Chris would totally oh, fuck yeah. marry <laughs> if he yeah. could. The one, the only Jesse Blunts. What's your deal? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? <laughs> what you can't speak? Are you mute? You can't speak English? Yes, you can. Yes, you can't. Okay. You open your mouth and tell me where you're from. Just make sure it's clear fucking English, okay? Where are you from? I'm from, I'm from Hong Kong. Oh, China. 
China. <laughs> yeah. well, what kind of American are you? <laughs> yeah, what kind of American are you? Yeah, fuck me. Uh, Chris loves the racists. I don't know why. What the fuck is um, that? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, Chris and Ronnie Adams are going to form a support group. You know, <laughs> men who are abused and gaslit on podcasts. I know. I know, Neil. That's oh, a, that's a, that's oh, okay. a, that's a, people no, listen no, the first right. time, they, they must think I'm a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad human being, man. I mean, there's only 27 people watching right now. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, then here's the guy that I would totally marry. The one, the only, the great William Defoe. William, not William, but William. That's why I said. Okay, all right. <laughs> I did it in Barnes a funny believes. accent. Barnes believes in what he's doing. And you? You believe? In 65, yeah. No. No. What happened today is just the beginning. We're going to lose this war. Come on. You really think so? Us? We've been kicking other people's asses for so long, I figure it's time we got ours kicked. From How the fuck did you not use him as the Green Goblin? <laughs> done because, because, fucked up. Oh, because you, done you know fucked what? Up. No, no. You done fucked up because that's what everybody knows him from. Go back and get a movie that nobody knows that he's really in anymore. How many, how many? How many people? How many people today watch fucking Platoon? And everybody, I everyone watched. Watch no, I, I, I have met so many people who have never seen Platoon. I know. I, there's a lot of people that don't know culture. They're mostly women. Yeah. Listen to me. Oh, come on. Um, come on. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We're going to get canceled by the end of this episode. Yeah. Right. 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 Leave, leave these two innocent men that I've now taken with me into the dark alley alone. <laughs> I just focus all your hatred on me. Anyway, more. So is the point of these clips to, to play for like obscure movies that nobody fucking remembers or knows? Or is the well, point to play is a multi award winning movie? Yeah. And I figure play it's, green, it's play a green goblin crit. Come on, Spider Man! Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Kinds of kindness. All right, let's get going. One more. Oh, do I got one more? Yeah. Or I don't care. Margaret Coley, whatever. Fucking, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm just, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm just taking my own stuff. That was a gift. I wanted you to have it. I don't want it, and we're not going to both use it. Suki, it's your wall dildo. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just Alice, too. I never liked her. And she won't stop barking. <laughs> How can I take the dog, Suki? I don't have a home, remember? You kicked me out. <laughs> take Alice, take the wall dildo. It's your dildo, Suzanne. That's from Driveway Dolls. Were you doing cosplay as Richard Pryor's character from that one scene in <laughs> Superman 3? No, actually, that was from uh, one day I worked at a bank and they wanted us to dress like Western, so I dressed like a bank robber. <laughs> like, you live the dirt like, man, dude. <laughs> It's like why 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 do they want us? Okay, I'm dressing as a bank robber. That's all I'm gonna yeah. get. I did. Yeah. I had the bandana. The oh, I thought I, I like, thought I thought maybe you had him. I mean, whatever. But yeah, that's whatever. But anyway, Chris, tell everybody where they can find us. <laughs> you can find us on Movies Don't Suck Net. We're at XMTS Podcast. We're on Facebook at Movies Don't Suck Podcast. We're on uh, what else do we do? Fucking Instagram at TS Podcast. We're also on Patreon, Patreon.com. So you know, suck. We're at w- Just write this shit down for now. <laughs> like, we're at W2Mnet.com. It's W number two, M is, M is movies net.com. You find us there along with Mark's uh, podcast. Uh, we're also on uh, Patreon, Patreon slash movies don't suck. We're on Bonfire, Bonfire.com. So you know, suck on Sunday, do you'll find shirts and shit with our names on it. And where do you find podcasts? You can find movies don't suck on Sunday, do you? We're also on YouTube and all that shit. Subscribe, whatever. Like, <laughs> you know, who we talking about today? I can really think about the one, the only, Nola's uh, Corel. Creole. Creole. Motherfucker. Creole. <laughs> Motherfucker. Said, Coral. Creole. Kremlin. I said Coral. It's Creole, dude. Kremlin. It's Creole. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Now, look at this beautiful restaurant. It's one of my favorite restaurants in the entire area of Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's beautiful. It looks like it's speakeasy. It's just cool. It's awesome. Look at this beautiful food. 
Oh, oh yeah. Gorgeous looking. Mm. Oh like, yeah, look at that. Rollins and Tulsa yeah. are like counterintuitive to each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. oh, look, look, at look at this. this. Yeah. 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 I could be there right now if you guys <laughs> do this on you do it, you know, here's the, here's Ooh, the deal. Can you send me that in the mail, please? <laughs> that that Bloody Mary. That looks amazing. <laughs> Dude, this is exactly like seriously. It's my favorite restaurant. If you guys ever go to come to Tulsa, it's at thirteen thirty four East Fifteenth Street. They've been around for a good like fifty, sixty years. It's one of the the go to places that anytime someone comes visit me, I usually give them as this is one of the options to go there because their food is just and it's it's good price unless you buy like a unless you buy like you know like a prime rib or some stupid like that. Like this plate, I'm sure only costs like sixteen bucks, eighteen bucks. You know, it's like somewhere around there. Uh, those cost, I think, like 28. But, like, rather, go to Nola's. Have good times. They're awesome. The guy, owner Bill, is a great, awesome dude, too. Literally, go to Nola's. Get food. I would be there right now enjoying some food. But Chris made me work today. No, motherfucker. I said choose a time. This is the time you gave me. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Um. But are you, are you ready to get to movies? I think we're ready to talk movies. Yeah, let's get to the movies, man. Come okay. on. We've uh, been here. We've already been here for like an hour. Okay, Beverly Hills. <laughs> I'm sure there's 28 people watching uh -huh. want to know why a movie review place hasn't talked about movies. Yet. Okay, we're talking Beverly Hills Cop, Axel Left, directed by Mark Mahoy. Mark Mahoy directed such things as, I think this is his first, but yeah, this is his first like, big-ass movie. Uh, this star is the incredible uh, Eddie Murphy as Axel Foley and John Ashton as as a... Uh, uh, yeah. Sin City's where That's not it. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Neil's got me all fucked up. Thanks a lot, dude. I'm Sergeant Taggart, and this is my partner, Detective Rosewood. You always treat visitors from out of town like this? We also got uh, Taylor Page as Jane Saunders. Same bitch that wanna smile in your face, be the same bitch that gonna come for you. Judge Ryan Hold as Billy Rosewood. We found out your wife is worth quite a bit more than 10000 I got Joe and Gordon Levitt as Detective Bobby Abbott. Sin City's where you're going with your eyes open. And finally, Kevin Bacon uh, as, as Captain K. Grant. And there was a time for this law, but not anymore. You know, what's the storyline for Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F? It's Beverly Hills Cop. Do I really need to explain yeah, it? Yeah, go ahead, man. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm just kidding. I'm just effing with you today. All right. Axel Foley returns to Beverly Hills after his daughter's life is threatened and works with old pals John Tagger and Billy Rosewood to uncover a conspiracy. Who wants to turn on this? Right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, a couple of years back, Sean Comer and I on our podcast where we review movie fan franchises, Long Road to Ruin, um, we did the entire Beverly Hills Cop trilogy mm -hmm. thinking, well, we'll never do a sequel to this. We can just do this whenever. I think we might have actually done it for it's part of like, you know, Black History Month. Uh, I was reminded how much I loved the first Beverly Hills Cop it's so movie. Good. It is it's so good. I listened back to that podcast. I'm going to repeat what I said then. It is the original Beverly Hills Cop is just about perfect. Mm -hmm. It is exactly the right blend of comedy and action. It has, at the time when these things still existed, an on-screen star. Yep. Eddie Murphy it was Eddie Murphy in the eighties was at like the height of his powers. Like he really, I, I know he started on SNL and he was a star of the stage. I'm gummy, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they come up with fish. Goody goo goo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Eddie Murphy Raw and Eddie Murphy Delirious, his concert movies were, um, they were phenomenal sellers. I mean, Eddie Murphy, you couldn't get any better than Eddie Murphy at that time. Mm -hmm. But Beverly Hills Cop was like the star vehicle of his that really pushed him to the moon. Uh, and, you know, and turned him into a leading man more so than anything he had done prior to that. It is also the most one of the most solid scripts I've ever seen. Like the, thinking back on it, thinking back to that review, it was fucking flawless. And I, I'm bringing all that up because I, I I watched this one Axel F, and I have to tell you, 
I'm glad I'm on this review today as I've been on the last couple because I yeah. always have something I'm bringing to these reviews. Like, yeah. they're never like, I'm talking to these movies. I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of 50 50. Like, this isn't a quiet place day one where I'm like, oh, I'm doing it because it's on the schedule. Yeah. Like, I was not looking forward to Axel F at all. I was with because you. I was scared. 30, of you. These 30 plus year sequels of shit done from when I was a kid rarely work out. Sure, for every one in 10, you have a Top Gun Maverick. Right. But yeah. the other nine. Sucked in Leoc. Yep. And I was like, they're gonna right. ruin they're gonna ruin this movie for me. And let me tell you how Axel F was fucking perfect. Like this was done. One of the things I've noticed about a lot of movies is that they go back to these original concepts because they're familiar, they'll draw people in, viewers, tip box office tickets, whatever, whatever the uh, the uh, the goal is. And it's like they don't know why the first one worked. I've said this before. They don't know why the first one worked, so they don't know what they're doing with the sequel. And then it ends up being terrible. And here, this was done with love and care, and it was casted appropriately. It hit everything. And with the original people. That's, that's what made yeah. it best, too. Because the original but they, people came sometimes back. When you have the original people, they don't know what they're fucking doing either. Like, you know, George Lucas, for yeah, example. Um, <laughs> you know. but Christopher Nolan. Yeah, no, shut up. Um, <laughs> so, he still doesn't know what he's doing. Axel F really hit every pitch, every tenor, um, every beat absolutely perfectly. And it was funny. It, compare this to this is going to be an odd comparison, but stay with me. Compare Axel F to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, where they are oh, yeah. they, they are marionetting old man Ford around, <laughs> and yeah. yawn. And they're just like, well, we'll go digitally de-age him. It'll be fine. Wonderful. You have a very young-looking corpse that you're weekending at Bernie's. <laughs> on the it looked terrible. I fucking hate the dial. Of, the dial of yeah. is the antithesis of Axel F. They found a way, because Eddie Murphy is no spring chicken. I mean, he's not Martin Lawrence, who's 500 pounds. Right. He looks like his character from Big Mama's House now <laughs> in, in Bad Boys 4. Damn, However, dude, just ripping apart. Yeah. yeah. So the thing, is, however, I guarantee you that was not acting when he was in the when he was in the convenience store. He literally walked off fucking set and was like, like "Give me a hot dog and some skittles." Yeah, like, some skittles. Just, just shoot this, it'll be fine. Get his fat ass moving. Let's go. Um, go see Bad Boys Four. In the pantheon, anyway. in the pantheon of uh, Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills costumes, this is my second favorite at the first one. I like this better yeah, than two. It, it's a bit one, it's one, four, two, three. Three yeah. is terrible. Oh, God. Three um, is anyway, so, so I can finish my point and you guys can talk. Um, they found a way for Eddie Murphy to do action sequences appropriately for an old fucking man. Yes. They had yeah. to drive cars. And I'll tell you, there's nothing more exciting in a car chase than him destroying the streets of fucking Detroit like a Mad Max movie set to The Heat Is On. <laughs> I was so happy when I heard that. When I heard that song. So I told my son, I, I, as soon as I was done watching Axel F, I was like, I, I, I texted Jonas and I was like, hey, you got to watch Axel F. Go on Netflix now and watch this movie. He was like, what's it about? And I'm like, it's, and I told him what Beverly Hills Cop was about. And he's like, well, shouldn't I watch the first one? And I'm like, you absolutely should. 20 to 30 minutes later, I called him back. I'm like, hey, I found the opening. I found the, one of the greatest car chases in cinema history, the opening to Beverly Hills Cop. Mm-hmm. It's on YouTube. Watch it. He's like, dad, I'm like 40 minutes into this movie. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're watching it already. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think of it? And he's talking about the first one. I'm like, what do you think of it? He was like, any scene where Eddie Murphy is just walking around to black music is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, good, you're a good boy. Um, so between that and the action sequences, he absolutely loved it. I'm like, and it, and I tell you, if you want to gauge for what's good or what's bad, ask a 10 year old boy. That's my, that's mm-hmm. my thing. Like my son really has a keen fucking no keen eye for what makes an entertaining movie. And both the original and Axel F four stars home run right out of the park. I like, baby, I like this movie quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The only problem I had with this movie, I was sitting here watching it with my wife and I, and I, I watched all three of them. I always, I did when too. They're, I plus, did too. why, why not? Cause yeah. it's Beverly Hills cop. Yeah. And my, be honest, I think I watched Beverly Hills cop one like three weeks ago anyway, mm-hmm. you know, just mm-hmm. like just watching it. But the two things I really missed from this movie, and this, this is the only complaints I really have about it. One, uh, 
I didn't miss, but this is just a complaint about the movie. I really don't feel Axel Foley was a guy that'd give up on his daughter and not try to do it because everything about Axel Foley in every movie is that he never gives up. He just keeps going no matter what. And I just don't feel like that would be the way he would be as a dad. Can I just debate you on that point? Number one, number one, I have two kids. Mm -hmm. I can sympathize with a father who the kids make it hard to be a parent. Yep. And her, yeah. her line in the movie about the child is always a child and the parent is always the parent. And yes, the child is always going to make life difficult, act stupid, do the wrong thing and make the parent question, you know, every just every parenting decision they've ever made and their own sanity. 100% tracked with me. Um, her line about I or his line about I've always been a father for as long as you've been a daughter. Reminds me of something I said to my kids in the last couple of days. I've never been a divorced dad before. I don't know how to do this. I'm going to need some guidance. Yeah. I, I, how much do you, how much do you want? Right. From you, you need from me. Um, so to, to counter your point, he doesn't give up on the getting the bad guys, but I don't know if you've ever had to deal with a child um, who's making you feel like everything you do uh, doesn't work and everything you, you know, everything you try to do uh, doesn't work out and you just, sometimes you just give up and like it's giving up on being a dad is not the same as giving up on being a cop or, you know, giving mm-hmm. up on being a case. Yep. And, you know, should you No, absolutely not. I'm not making the argument that I'm not saying that I am and I shouldn't, and I don't think any father should give up on their kids, but man, does it, does it happen? And does it occur to people, especially when things are just an uphill struggle every step of the way? Um, so even before that conversation with my kids, I, when he was, when they were having the, the stuff between him and the daughter, who I really like Taylor Page. Yeah, she's I, great. I, I don't remember what else. Right, I, right. She was in Lola. Um, I remember what else she, she was in. Boy, was that a character who I was afraid they were going to underwrite and write shitty and oh, that she no. was going to be shrill and she was going to emasculate him and everything is going to be about her and she was going to be fucking Wonder Woman. You know, modern movies. They didn't yeah. emasculate him. What the fuck are you talking about? She no. cut him off at the knees every time he tried to do a character. Her opening scene, that's they my favorite her. part of Beverly Hills yeah. Cop. That so was my second thing scene, I wanted to get they to. They drive her and her car every off a fucking cliff. Cool. You know, every listen, time listen. he did a... Listen, Every time he did another character, like when he showed up in the suit and tie, and she's mm-hmm. like, you look like a card salesman. Dude, one of my favorite things of the original Beverly Hills is just like, on a whim, he just changed the character. But like, that, that's, when he walked to that's the Beverly Hills. the fact that she called him out on his bullshit Yeah, character. that's what I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm glad yeah. that she did that. She's going to call him on his bullshit. And I really, nah. um, the, and the, I know that you want, uh, you know, Axel, a fool in your mind is a paragraph of a good man. Right? <laughs> because that's what you're saying, but but uh, he's just as far as oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I will never in my <laughs> fucking hundred years on this planet ever say anybody from the state of Michigan is a good man. Okay, period. <laughs> All right, that's All right, fair. Never, that will never happen. Okay, but, but let listen. me jump in here real quick. I think it was okay that she was c- cutting him down about his like his characters and stuff because it's kind of one of those. Hey, this worked thirty years ago. It doesn't really work anymore, and we're gonna call it out. G. Gordon Levitt. Um, I got his name. Hopefully, uh, I did. him doing the him him doing the thing where he's just like calling me out of my manhood, and you think I'm going to give you what you want, be, you know, and like just immediately taking the piss out of that. I was like, that's great so, because they do it once, and then we move on, and we're doing yeah. new things now. What I'm saying is yeah. like they made her a vulnerable character that needed saving on two or three different occasions mm-hmm. as she should have been. She's the girl in this male oriented action movie. That's what you do. That's why we watch. And so the first, the, her opening scene is she's a badass lawyer, you know, who's a busy businesswoman who don't need no man. The first thing they do is throw her out a fucking window <laughs> <laughs> and, and she has to be rescued by the cops. It's great. So one of the things so, that I really actually enjoyed about this movie is the fact that, that the new characters they put in there, Worked, yeah, you know, like Gordon Levitt worked, Kevin Bacon worked, having and yeah, they didn't uh, crowd it with all these new people. We basically had two people that are new. Kevin Bacon's motivation for being a bad guy in this was awesome. He was like, I've been a cop for a while. It's this is the most un, this is the most uh, like unforgiving, fucking thankless job ever. So yeah, I, I'm now trying to just make as much money as possible. I deserve it. And Kevin, and Bacon's, Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Kevin Bacon Bravo. also, Bravo. He's, he is still so fucking cool and everything he's in and mm-hmm. this is this is no exception like like yeah. like like even 
even for the interview for for this movie, he was just like, "Yeah, I just took this job because, uh, hello, I get to be in a Beverly Hills Cop movie with Eddie yeah. Murphy." And he goes, "That's a bucket list item right there." I don't know if you know that, but I know that. And one of it's the, like one of the things I said about Beverly Hills Cop Three is it seems like nobody wants to be there. Everyone's just there for the paycheck. Yep, yep. It's the opposite right. of Beverly Hills right. Cop Three. Everyone wanted to be there. You could. It's a weird thing, especially if you're like if you're empathic like I am. Um, to feel the energy of the actors in a movie through mm-hmm. the screen when it's that good and you can feel that energy, it's palpable. It is ex- also palpable when nobody wants to be there and you're just feeling like it's an energy suck. Yeah. That's Beverly Hills Cop 3. Yeah, and th- this one is this one. Yeah. I, I really kind of wish they'd retcon it, honestly. <laughs> that we'd act like <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop 3 doesn't cannon. exist because it was so. <laughs> I, I watched it the, the same day I watched this one. And it was just like, thankfully, this watch that takes out my mouth. But I was like, what the fuck were they thinking when Beverly Hills Cop 3? Like, it was, it was, dude, it was bad. I, I know. I forgot how bad it was. And I, I forgot how bad it was until I watched it the other day. Yeah. I was just like, why? Why does this exist? Yeah. Why? The reason why we used to say on Long Road to Ruin, by the time you get to the third one, you should have stopped at two. Yeah. Uh, but, but Axel F is, is a. It's a legacy sequel done right, you know. Yeah. It has has the right. It has the right amount of nostalgia. Has the right amount of new shit, and it's 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 great that way. Like to me, I just I'm I'm glad this exists, and I'm glad it it they you know like you said like Dial Destiny they they had to de-age it and shit. This one takes the appropriate age bin and making do mm-hmm. appropriate age shit. You know what I mean? Like, yes, one hundred percent, Chris. Yeah. That's what I was saying before. Yeah. You have, if you have an old man, you can't be throwing him hither and yon, you know, or making, you know, or look like Daniel Craig in the last James Bond movie. You're a hundred. <laughs> Stop fighting a hundred men with your bare hands, yeah, or with one machine gun. Yeah, like here, dude, they, have him, that. They, he, they have him driving trucks. He's driving cars. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's not. He's not chasing after people to half his age. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just. This thing, this did things right, and it felt like also they sort of. It's not the Beverly Hills of the '80s or the early '90s. It's the Beverly Hills and now, mm-hmm. and having that change in the demographic and landscape really helped it bring it to 2024 where we are. And I really, really appreciated that. And Eddie Murphy, he's great. Like, like he, I. This is better than coming to America. This is better than. Uh, I mean, this is this is where we want to be. Yeah, I, yeah. I the a thing that really got me excited about this movie and what what made it really good, like right off the beginning when he's like motherfucker, and <laughs> as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh shit, yeah. we're getting Eddie Murphy, uh, yeah, we're getting Axel Foley, we're gonna Dude, we're gonna hear motherfucker yeah. a lot. The conversation he has at the Detroit Red Wings gang with the white cop and the white <laughs> cop, you know, and and he's like, oh what, I can't like black, I can't like hockey because I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was a very it was a very true modern moment because it totally plays with the sensitivity towards race and gender and sexuality mm-hmm. while also making fun of it. Mm-hmm. And look, if you've ever talked to somebody who isn't white, yeah, they, when they're smart and they're in the know, they can they, they'll fuck with you about it, and they mm-hmm. know that they have a leg up on you. And it's just like you just sort oh, of yeah. accept that, like yeah, all right, you win this round. <laughs> um, but and they totally do that in the beginning of the movie, and I was like, yeah, that's exactly what would happen. It's hilarious. That's exactly how Axel would act it, you know. And that's yeah, yeah. He has that character down, you know. Eddie Murphy yeah. has Axel fully down, and it's not that Axel fully from Beverly Hills Cop three, who's no fun at all. This is. <laughs> This is Axel Foley from Beverly Hills Cop One and Two, where he's fun mm-hmm. and, to, and a great to look at, and he's he's sleek and he's cool. This is exactly what Eddie Murphy. I was, yeah, I was so afraid we're. Yeah, I was so afraid we we're going to get the wash down. Like you know, yeah. like oh my gosh, this is this is, is this PG thirteen Eddie Murphy. Is this PG? <laughs> like yeah, uh, I did not think we were going to get this Eddie Murphy. I loved it. I, I'll watch it again right now. If someone yeah, to yeah like I, said, I told my I, I told my son. I said, go get your stepbrother and go watch Beverly Hills Cop. Axel F. Like. You know, I highly recommend. So I, a little ways back, Jonah was like, I want you to show me all the good movies. I'm like, well, buckle in. I got two decades of fucking movies. You, the 80s and 90s. And, um, you know, I would, but I would throw that in there too. I would absolutely, this is one I would, I would absolutely, um, I was recommending this to people at work. And I don't talk to people at work about movies anymore because I get tired of hearing. I don't watch movies. I don't know what movies are. What's a movie? Um, and everyone's from fucking Belarus where they don't have culture. So I... <laughs> 
<laughs> like what he had like a Belarusian audience. Um, but this one, I was, I, I was like, I'm going to take the step to actually talk to my coworkers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know you idiots have Netflix. You, you're mostly girls. You watch documentaries about killing men. I get it. Mm-hmm. What well, turn off the documentaries about killing men and watch Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. So I have this three. I have three things that I um, three things that I do when it comes to figuring out how to recommend a movie. Do I recommend my friends or I recommend to my in laws? Or do I recommend to anyone? And this movie, mm-hmm. I recommend it uh, to anyone and everyone. A uh, uh, hundred, yeah. That, that changes. That changes. That's, that's, that's movie. a fun movie. That's a fun movie. All right, Chris, let's get started. What, what's your rating? Uh, my rating on this is a four point two. Actually, I really fucking enjoyed Axel F quite a bit. It's it's solid. It's better than one. I mean, it's better than two. I mean, it's the best of them. And to have that is very fucking rare. So I want to give Beverly Hills Cop all the love we can get because it's it's a fantastic. It's in the world of legacy sequels, there is shit, and then there's Axel F. So, there's um, shit, and then there's Axel. Axel. Uh, Neil, what's your score on this? At the end of the year, when we got when we do our top ten and worst five and all of that, mm-hmm. right now this is my top five. All oh, right, great. This was, it was that good, uh, oh, and that nice. speaks more of how horrible movies have been this year so far. <laughs> oh my god, I know. Uh, but I, we got yeah, plenty I of it. that to talk about here soon. Fuck anyway, you, Neil. Um, oh god, oh god. <laughs> oh my god i'm so gonna tear this movie apart uh so anyway um so uh what's your rating one through five i said mark uh, oh yeah. um i would give it an i would give it an a of 10 okay works an eight out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we gotta I'm breathalyze the guests all right we gotta breathalyze the guests before they come <laughs> all right I, i'm sick of this shit right, i give later. it I give it nine monkeys in a barrel. Yeah. <laughs> nine monkeys in a barrel. All right. Uh, Chris, I'm with you. I'm going to go one above just because it actually did. It surprised the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. Like from that beginning, like the heat is on. And then all of a sudden he's like, motherfucker. And like literally when it comes to that part, it surprised me so much. It made me so happy. I was smiling half the They could have fucking ruined it from the next 20 minutes mm-hmm. and I wouldn't even care. And I was still smiling. Like <laughs> I got to hear Eddie Murphy one time say, motherfucker, you know, like, yeah. so it's like, but uh, I'm giving it a 4.3. I liked it. I loved it. Um, I want some more of it. I tried so hard. You can't get nothing. All right, Neil. No. I'm on, I'm, let's put it on Tomatoes game. What is the line score for Beverly Hills Cop Axel F? They definitely gave it an 88%. 79%. Yeah. 89? Really? 79. 79. 79. Oh, well, fuck them in the goat ass. Okay, what is the creek score for Beverly Hills Cop Axel F? Uh, probably negative five because critics hate anything good. <laughs> uh, let's go. We'll go 83. 65%. I knew it was going to be in the 60s. Yeah, yeah so, I should have been mm-hmm. in the 60s. Oh, the I would say for I, old I'm heads, doing like, the other thing and I'm already, my mind's I would already. Say for old heads like us, yeah, it was perfect. And for people who know movies, this it, this is structurally sound. It's, it's mm-hmm. darn near perfect. However, I can see this missing with an audience of young morons mm-hmm. because they because they don't get this kind of genre. They don't get this thing. They're not educated on these kinds of movies. And so for some of this, it's going to be a miss because they they were not brought up in the culture that would appreciate a movie like this. And as for critics, I don't know. Critics tend to be critics probably love kinds of kindness, but it didn't love this for all the reasons people go into movie criticism where they're, they're looking for the most delectable fruit on the most, you know, ripe tree. And it's like, sometimes you can have a perfect movie. That's also just dumb fun. Mm-hmm. And you know, then, that's, that's the secret. Yeah. Chris consensus is on this Con- content to be content to let a very game. Eddie Murphy bring all the heat. The fourth Beverly Hills cop goes to nostalgia, but Mark to welcome return for Axel Foley. Uh, that sounds like a good review, if you ask me. Um, <laughs> uh, this this is a, I'll read a, a bad review and a good review. This is from Stephen Propke at Third Coast Review. He says, first time feature director Mark Mulley does a serviceable job keeping Axel F moving and allowing Mary, Eddie Murphy enough room to improvise, but still gives a 1.5 out of 4. And this is from uh, Alan, Alan McCarr of The MacGuffin. Uh, he says, I've always been wary of legacy sequels as the worst of them rely too heavily on nostalgia as opposed to telling a good story. Fortunately for us, this does a better job of balancing the two sides. Yeah, this is a this is a legacy sequel that works, and I'm glad it's we're all the better for seeing it. Awesome. All right, 
you know, uh, you're, you're for news, you're still pulling stuff up. Neil. <laughs> we, we've lost I'm not Neil. Listening to you anymore, motherfucker. We've lost Neil to the I, I know, he's, he's so upset. I'm just kidding. Are you ready for me to play the, play I'm just the, kidding. Yeah, let's play the news. Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> this is the movie so suck. It's over the news. Chris is fucking going crazy today because I'm fucking with him hardcore, and it's awesome. <sighs> I know what you got for us. All right, so the final destination. I'm, I was already talking. Are you off? What? what? What's going on here? You're off. You're like fucking like, like you're flipping it out and you're. Oh, it's because I pulled out everything. All right. All right. In five, four, three, two, one, I'm going to be back. Uh, you're no, cl- no clipping the whole time, right? Like he's just like going in and out. Is it just me? Or is this voice all fucking. Um, uh, yeah, the, it's been kind of a botchy sound. How are you, Chris? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm at the girlfriend's house for the week. It's been great so far. Oh, good. good. Neil, come back. Uh, come back. I know you're back now. Did he just leave the podcast entirely? He might have. <laughs> like, I didn't talk know. to an empty chair. He's going to talk. About, he's I, gonna, can do, I can do another 20 minutes on, on fucking Beverly Hills yeah. Cop, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, he's not going to want to talk kinds of kindness because he didn't like it, apparently. Either that he's trying, oh to, my God. Either that he's trying to upset me, which is, uh, always, <laughs> which is always the case. You know, he's always trying to upset me. I don't know what the fuck he's doing right now. You know, it's so funny. I was, when I was watching Kinds of Kindness last night, I was thinking about this podcast. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is going to be another boat is afraid situation. <laughs> where Neil's going to come on loaded for bear, ready to kill you. Because yeah. he was like, why do you make me watch these movies? Yeah. I clearly have an aesthetic I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just it. Uh, I, I, have, I have things to say about Kinds of Kindness. Some, some of them kind, some of them not as kind. Some of them not as kind, but we'll talk about it. But uh, yeah. I have. I've, I have to do, uh, sorry, I had to take a dump. Music. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right, now we're ready for, um, ready for news. <laughs> all right, ready for the news. Mm-hmm. Final destination. Okay, well, let's go from here. One, two, three, four, just in case you want to cut yeah. some of that bullshit you guys were talking. <laughs> I, was about, I don't know what the hell you guys were talking, but it was weird. Um, all right, Final Destination creator is set to put a new spin on the classic urban legend. That's right. Jeffrey Reddick, creator of Final Destination, is working on a new spin of the urban legend of Bloody Mary. I'm surprised it hasn't been made again. Like, like it's fertile ground like, for for she remakes. You know. So, like, literally, what is it going to be? Is it going to be like? Don't we have that? Isn't it called Candyman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just throwing that out there. I think Candyman uh, already quick, exists. Is Bloomhouse making it? <laughs> that's that's what I'm asking because they've they've remade some shit over the past couple years, and you know. It's going to be based on the New York Times, uh, New York Times bestselling book, Mary, the Summoning, follows a group of teenage girls who discover ancient spells and face the consequences. I feel like I've seen this movie before, honestly. I feel like, uh, <laughs> good. The only movie I want to know, the only Bloody Mary movie I want is, where did the drink Bloody Mary come from? You want the... I want the origin story of that. God you know? damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> like, I want the origin story of the Bloody Mary drink. <laughs> the, and it's got to be like something like really silly, almost like Family Guy, or right? Like a guy walks in, and he's got like, you know, like vodka, and he's got like tomato <laughs> juice. It's like, oh, slip and fall. Yeah. Peanut butter got on my jelly. Yo, jelly God, got you, my I was jelly. totally thinking it, that too. Isn't it crazy that fucking the, the, uh, Jerry Seinfeld made a movie about fucking Pop Tarts and Frosted? Is that, I'm like, I'm like, what is what is going on? It's really funny. I bet, man. Yeah, well, I, really I, I funny you guys haven't talked part. about that on here yet. Since you like to do one streaming movie and one like normal movie, one theater movie. Yeah, we haven't done it on Frosted. Uh, Chris, Chris hates uh, Jerry Seinfeld. I don't so hate Jerry Seinfeld, dude. At all. I, I you should... made it very clear you did not want to do that movie. What the fuck is your like, problem? Let's do the fucking movie. You know, you were. Like, we knew. No, we had zero discussion about, about it. What was that movie you made me do? That was like the shittiest movie ever last week. Uh, Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Oh my dude, god, dude, that was fun to fuck on the shit on. There's so many <laughs> movies I've missed this year because of injuries, and you're like, that's the movie we need to watch. Don't not catch up. All right, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna step in here and protect Chris from your <laughs> Chris. You can come on triple feature. We'll do unfrosted and two other streaming movies and i'll i'll, I'll protect you friend. okay i love you we'll thanks, talk about thanks, it thanks, you're welcome thanks mark <laughs> well 
Sorry, that was a trigger warning. Uh, and- <laughs> 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 all right. All right. Uh, uh, okay, now what were we going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Uh, November 14th, 2025. We're finally getting Now You See Me Part 3 will be coming out. That'll so, be awesome. I haven't seen either the uh, first ones. Like, so, uh, if we yeah, can- we talk hey, about what it. the fuck, dude? It's like Ocean's Eleven, but with I, better actors. Uh, but anyway, I kind of didn't know. <laughs> it's just like when we do these anyway, movies, these sequels or movies, I am completely set to go back and rewatch or watch the ones I haven't seen. So that's a good, you know, day for me. So I, there's nothing better than watching Daniel Ratliff freaking roofie a whole group of people and then make out with them in photographs. It's awesome. You gotta go see that now. That's amazing. What anyway. movie is this? Now you see me. Now you see me too. Yeah, that was part two. Now you see me too. Okay, he, he's the bad guy. He's a villain in that one. It's awesome. He's like a Bond villain. Um, judge, uh, Judge Mary Marlowe Summer rejects defense motion to dismiss charges in the Alec Baldwin trial. That's right. He's still going up for manslaughter. Yeah, I, I, I have a friend. I have a friend who's convinced he's going to prison for it. Like convinced. So I don't, I don't know. The trial is set uh, as of Monday. It starts in Santa Fe, New Mexico, so on July 9th. So Alec Baldwin might be going to jail. Cool. Yeah. You can go right next to go with Jonathan Majors. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a guy who's famous for writing but never writes is about to take on the Elden Ring adaptation. That's right. George R. R. Martin is about to now do an adaptation of the Elden Ring to become to television for films and TV. They I mean, haven't that is, specified what yet. That is interesting. So I have Elden Ring, and I played, I don't know, 30 minutes of it. But I have friends who love Elden, Elden Ring, and um, uh, right. it seems right up his alley, honestly. It seems like something he can do easy. I mean, does he even write anymore? Because hasn't he been writing the last book for the Game of Thrones universe for like 20 years now? I don't know if he's just in his I overall strength. It's been roughly 20 years, yes. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid live action. Metal Gear Solid live action movie is now in development. The script has been written by Derek Conley, aiming for a, a terrific adaptation through the Ozark. Uh, if you don't know this, Oscar Isaac is the one that is going to be playing Solid Snake. Until this, this starts filming, I'm not convinced it's even happening. Like, we've been talking about very good Solid movies for the past 20 years, you know? And it, it's just Solid. It's just Snake Whiskin. Solid Snake. <laughs> it's just Snake Whiskin at the same time. Fucking thing, but yeah, until they, until we'll, it's done filming, I have Mac Vincent's happening. Um, the same stunt team that worked on John Wick is now going to be working on Highlander with Henry Cavell. So now the same people that did ad action is going to be doing that action. So that we're going to get that ass with that sword, going to be doing some shit. It's going to be great, right? Right, Neil. No, sure. <laughs> Hey, dude, it was July 4th week. There's not many freaking news things out there. Right? I'm trying really hard, guys. <laughs> uh, are, talking about Chris, a movie that's... Hang on, hang on one second. Chris, let's keep no-selling this, for Neil, for him fucking with you, okay? Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool, cool. Till. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there is a movie that's been in limbo forever... That has finally got its release date, March 21st, 2025. I know Mark is really looking forward to it. It is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves will be finally the live action that they filmed six years ago. Yeah. Seven years ago. And, they, they've had, and then reshot almost as many times as they've had to reshoot Captain America 4. <laughs> exactly. So who's in and, it, you know, Who's in that movie? It's It's... Rachel, like, what is her name? Rachel Ziegler? Rachel, Ra- Rachel Hot Button Ziegler. <laughs> Rachel had to go to a and, concentration camp to learn how to talk to the press instead of what she was <laughs> Rachel Ziegler got and, reconditioned uh, by Disney. Gal Gadot is the evil queen, and the director is Mark Webb from uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Hey, you, want, you want my reaction to the story? Gal Gadot can't act. How about that? Gal Gadot had one good character. One Wonder Woman, and it was because basically oh, all the Nile. Was, You're right. That's the all the one to do was like right. look like a fucking Amazon oh. bee kick ass, and you know, and kind of whisper Uh-oh. whisper drone her dialogue. 
everything else she's in, she's terrible. She's uh, she's either a hot looking woman, I'd, hot looking Amazonian woman, death or she's nothing. Nile. No, no, Death of the Nile. That I, I I'd have to Death of the Nile would be the one that she was good into. Where she played Wonder Woman in a fancy dress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. She's a terrible actress. She has one character, and when she does that character, she does a character well. <laughs> so we all su- we all survive. Your feedback on the show is going to be: Who's the guy that just hates women? Oh, that's Mark. He doesn't hate women that's at all. Mark. That's just Mark. Um, I mean, it's only two people watching right now. I'm sure. <laughs> They're all like letter to the editor. What the fuck with this guy? All right, we survived it. We all survived Barbieheimer, but are we ready for Wickedator? See, I've heard it's moaned or mo- moan, mo- moaned, moaned. No, no, no. Wicked the new moaned. one is now Wickedator. Wickedator. The same day, the same day that Gladiator Two is being released is the same day that Wicked is being released. Did they move so the date? Now, Did they move the date from Thanksgiving week because it was supposed yes, to yeah. be originally? Okay. Originally, uh, both uh, Gladiator Two were both they were going to be on the twenty seventh, and right. they moved it to the twenty second. I gotta refucking so now, buy the whole calendar now. God damn it! <laughs> you so it's gonna be Wicked and Gladiator Two. And the two of them now, they want people to go as a double feature, just like no, no, they did with the Barbie. They people, now, Barbie Heimer was a, a community grown thing. Is this going to be, who said that they want to do Wiccan Nader? Like, who, who's saying that? I'm reading it off a fucking website, Chris. Who do you think made it? Can you, can you <laughs> calm the fuck down, Neil? I think you need to so, calm down. <laughs> so, a couple of things. One, when the Barbenheimer thing happened, it was Chris Nolan got a big money contract from Universal mm-hmm. after, they, after there was like a bidding war for him when he left Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. And then Warner Brothers had been working on Barbie since roughly the year of the flood. <laughs> and it got to a point where they, they both booked the same day in July and they played a game of chicken. They were mm-hmm. like, neither studio was willing to move their date. They were like, there's enough people out there who, want to go, who, who may or may not want to go see this Christopher Nolan atomic bomb movie. They're not girls. No girls going to see that. So all the girls will go see Barbie, which fine. We're not moving. And Universal was like, we paid the gross national product of Luxembourg for fucking Chris <laughs> Nolan. We're not moving. And th- that became the Barbenheimer thing. Mm-hmm. That's yes. what that was. It was two studios yeah. in a fucking gate in a game of gay chicken, you know, that just refused to move off that date. You don't need to continue. To, it was a once in a while thing that happens. You don't need to try to artificially recreate the Barbenheimer experience by just putting two big movies on the same day. I said this when somebody mentioned it to me about the whole Wicked Mo- uh, Moana thing. It's like, that's the same fucking audience. It's kids and families and women. It's like, well, like who cares? And then now they're putting it up against Gladiator? Other than fucking with my podcast calendar, <laughs> why would you do this? So I saw Wicked twice in person. The first time mm-hmm. I was I was fucking drunk, spending three quarters of it, <laughs> three quarters of it in the bathroom, trying not to throw up. Um, you know, I I have seen the Broadway musical Wicked. I've also read the book because I know, do. Because before I determined books were for burning, I I actually was a, I read a fair amount of fantasy, and I, the Wicked book is great. The musical, other than the one stupid George Bush joke that was unnecessary. Also very, very good. I think the movie will do fine. It just doesn't need to be on the same fucking day as Gladiator. Neil, I think you're mute, by the way. We can't hear you. You're mute. Yeah, he's muted. Yeah, Neil, we can't hear you. Either that or you're doing a De Niro impression. I am mute. Yeah, I, 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 I had to talk to Luki, and I, I muted my mic, and I didn't even realize. Yeah. I, like... I, bet, uh, I had a hawk to that thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, why are we not getting interrupted? Neil's down there. <laughs> but um, uh, definitely. All right. So the community movie is going to be coming out at the end of 2025. Is now the set date. Here they said so. Can't wait for that. As long as Chevy Chase is nowhere near it, that'll be awesome. And last but not least, the best story of the day. Guys, have you ever wanted to eat Buffalo Wild Wings for a whole decade? I don't want to eat Buffalo Wild Wings at all. It's gross. It's it's almost as bad as Chick Fil A or PDQ. <laughs> well, the movie that we're covering <laughs> next week—that could be the thing that I offended people with. Yeah, the yeah. Movie right. We're reviewing next week. Uh, 
The movie that we're reviewing next week, Jackpot, with John Cena and Aquafina. Are we doing what? Is <laughs> the movie we're covering next week? It's John Cena. Anytime a John where, Cena movie where, comes, where is, it, where is it going to be at? It's not theaters for sure. I don't know. I, you look it yeah, up, man. Right, That's right, what fine. the internet's for. Right, right. But anyway, John Cena and Aquafina star in an action movie, Jackpot, about a deadly lo- a lottery. A contest offers three. $35,000 prize package, including a gold bar, cash, and a decade free of Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't want that. That sounds like fucking torture. Yeah. Uh, that is amazing. That's, uh, by the way, Neil, it's going to be on Amazon Prime on the 15th. Yeah, I know. It's in August. I was just kidding. Oh. Um, I- <laughs> <laughs> so I have an announcement. Yes. Right here, right now. No, no, oh my God, dude. I'm sorry. Are you pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also. Is it mine? So they so they moved Wicked to the 22nd. I just verified that it's on the Wikipedia page. Mm-hmm. You're not wrong. But I said, fuck it. I'm still doing Gladiator 2 on November 25th. Yeah. And then because Moana comes out on the 27th, which is when Wicked was supposed to come out, mm-hmm. I'm still doing that on December 2nd. And fuck this, peoples. I'm going to do Wicked on December 9th. I'm going to wait two weeks to do Wicked. How about that? Now who's in charge? Yeah, fuckers. Um, yeah, bitches. Yeah. yeah. News. Uh, you can't tell me when to podcast and see a movie. God fucking damn it. And with that, let's talk kind of kindness. <laughs> That was the movies that don't suck and something the news. There wasn't shit to say because it's July 4th weekend and everybody was getting drunk and blowing up the arms of every redneck they could find. Kinds of Kindness, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, written by Yorgos and uh, Ephemus Philippou. This, this stars Emma Stone as three people. You are not doing this for the sake of art. You are doing this because you want to feel relevant again. Jesse Plemons as three people. <laughs> What's your deal? Where are you from? Also, Willem Dafoe as uh, three of the three people. Barnes believes in what he's doing. And Margaret Wally as three people. That's not Margaret Wally. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm just taking my own stuff. Also, this story is uh, also uh, Hong Chow's uh, people. And um, what's, yeah, and Yorgo Stefanikos as a couple people. Bob Dude, I think shows up in this as well. Neil? Why don't you go ahead and read the storyline for Kinds of Kindness. And that word that you uh, says, it's triptych fable. Triptych. Just so you know. I went to the swinger party a fable. Long ago and I tripped over a triptych. Neil, take the, take the dude off. <laughs> What's on this movie? <laughs> take Joe Henry. I know, I, know it is, I know who it is. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so uh, I was said this on the podcast, but Neil's like, do you believe Joe Henry? I said, I am... Um, I'm ambivalent on Joe Hendry. <laughs> <laughs> I give a fuck less about Joe Hendry. Yeah. Neil, well, what's the tool on for kinds of kindness? A triptych fable following a man without choice who tries to take control of his own life. A policeman who is alarmed that his wife, who was missing at sea, has returned and seems a little bit different. And a woman determined to find a specific someone with a special ability who is destined to become a protagonist spiritual leader. So this movie itself, I'm going to say, I'm going to start out with it real quick. So just so you know, this is a this is a movie that is in the AMC that's two and a half hours long that is, uh, I'm sorry, oh, close to three hours long, and it's written by Yorgos Salatimos, and this is, I can see this at AMC. <laughs> like, you know, Poor Things was, I guess, the Yorgos' most mainstream movie, and then he went the other way, as in alienated people who saw that and made this movie. <laughs> I got too much attention with poor things. I got too many awards. It's like people, think, hey, people, people like, people like I, my movies. I'm, I can't have them. Yeah. Yes. So uh, like, he was he was like, hey man, what can I do to fuck my reputation? I know I can make a shitty version of Room 104. Just so you know, or I can make a crappy version of Black Mirror. Just, Neil, just or so I can you, make a shitty version of Twilight. Neil, so. Neil, just so you know, this is not going to be the thing that sinks his reputation. It's not. I I, I actually. Oh no no I. I like his other movies. This movie just was like boring, was say, useless, and didn't mean a, anything. He's got a reputation for being inaccessible. Yeah. Have you seen The Lobster? It's terrible. <laughs> Poor, yeah. things <laughs> Poor Things was the most accessible thing he's ever done, and I don't think he meant to do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
like I don't think he meant for poor things to be as accessible or as award winning as it was. And then I think he did this as sort of a palate cleanser. So uh, you guys, uh, I'm I'm guessing you guys didn't like this. I I yeah, I mostly like this thing down. Um, they're they're thing, there are some great scenes. There's some things that aren't so great. Uh, the, the it's really uneven when it comes to how good each little short is. Um, but uh, for the most part, I thought that Jesse Plemons in this whole thing was fantastic. He's so good in it. it this is a very well acted piece. Mm-hmm. So this is one of those movies where I can tell you, it's kind of like the bike riders mm-hmm. where I can tell you all of the individual craft elements are very well done. It really doesn't matter whether or not I was, I liked it or was entertained by it. You know, movie criticism should be about do the craft elements work, not your personal opinion. Your personal opinion can play a role, but it shouldn't be what a lot of professional movie reviewers think it is, which is their personal opinion. Mm-hmm. This is not an editorial. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Kinds of kindness. These are interestingly written um, shorts, like mm-hmm. little short films. These are extremely well acted. Oh god! Um, this is yet another. I was thinking a lot about Wes Anderson while I watched this because yeah, this is yet another enough, movie. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, strange. This is another movie that makes me hate white people. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck? I, <laughs> I, I, this is like, it's it's one of those where I know people like this exist, mm-hmm. but it kind of feels like they're on an alien world where there is no soul. So this is you know? this is very Yorgos like centric. You've seen Dog mm-hmm. Tooth or Lobster or uh, Killing a Sacred Deer. This is what I was like. So with the favorite, he did the favorite and poor things, which weren't Yorgos uh, centric movies, even though he directed them. And then he did this one. I'm like, oh, this is what I remember. I remember the stilted dialogue. The drollness yeah. of it, and like that's his style, and I, I don't fault him for having a style. You, you and know that, what also reminded me of? What's that? Um, as far as directors go, uh, what's his fucking name? Um, uh, Jim Jarmusch. Oh yeah, yeah. This good. Oh, man, Jim I, Jarmusch. I thought you were gonna say Bob Coldcat. <laughs> no, he's a great director. What are you talking about? Okay, God bless Clinton? America. Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ, man! Come on. That is so fucking great. I, I can only th- remember his stand up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, my wife is so hot. <laughs> All right, let's. I'll give you my real opinion about this. It was a good. It was good for the first hour. Okay. And after that, it was just so slow and boring. Like people left the theater. I was. Oh like, yeah. People actually I got up and left. Of my going. Like they left the theater. I've never seen anybody leave a theater except for uh, poor things. Yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. Well, I, mean, I saw that poor things that, too. That was because they didn't realize what that was. And then your your like, gross laughing most making it, movies like, that are that are an endurance test, if nothing else. <laughs> I, uh, and, I I actually enjoyed my time seeing this, um, but Neil, keep going. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, yeah. But um, if this, if each segment was just a little shorter, if like it, they could have got this like in like around the two hour mark, I think this would have been better for me. But it just felt so long and so boring. And like, I mean, the 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 best part of it was uh, the acting. I'm gonna go with the acting, mm-hmm. and it was all Defoe, like. All the foe. Every I'm time he's on the screen, Emma Stone is huge. Emma Stone, especially in that third sketch, is really, really good. No, here's the here's the thing I oh like. My, I like yeah. about Emma. No, no, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the third one is good, yeah. but like the foe, every time he's on the screen, he was like, like what? He was a he was a cruel fucking like Bond villain almost, and <laughs> then he was like, uh, then he was like a sex symbol <laughs> in another one, and then he's like a dad like, in one, uh, yeah, <laughs> a guy with daddy issues, you know, like you know the. But I want to mention. Like, it, uh, it did a good job. Here's what Go I like, here's what I'm, I want to mention this real quick uh, before we move on on, on this. But so I want to mention the relationship that Yorgos has with Emma. I love that Emma's doing weird shit like this. I am so happy that yeah, we right. that she's going crazy with Nathan Field. Even like, I know like, I miss Easy A, man. I, I don't miss this at all. I, I think a, I think a, Easy A movie. I love that Emma's doing this weird shit. I I want to do it continue oh, yeah. weird shit. Like she's doing this, and then that thing with Nathan Fielder. I forget what it's called, but she's doing she's doing another movie with your girls right now. They were talking about it in the end of the interview I listened to last night. No, but, she needs to go back and do more stuff with with Seth Rogen, man. I need no, another super no, bad. I am totally fine with her doing weird shit. I want to do more weird shit because she's fearless in this. And she, Emma Stone, 
Jesse Plemons on the phone. We're all fantastic in this as acting. No, uh, she needs to be movie 43 right now on a movie 44. And I want it right I'll now. With her. <laughs> so here's my question. I'm going to direct. I'm going to direct this to Chris. Yeah, sure. Because I'm because right. now I'm hosting your show. I'm taking over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Chris, wait, 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 what, what, what was that? What was that? <laughs> Neil, bring, anyway, him bring him um, back, Neil. Bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I deserve that. Um, <laughs> bad mark. Um, but seriously, Chris, mm. leave me a lot of this for a minute. Um, did you think that Yorgos Lazimov was trying to make a statement about like sexual fluidity? Because that's all I got from this movie was that, and I don't quite know what he was getting at. Mm-hmm. It was, it, that just seemed to be like the whole point of kinds of kindness is just like, you know, we're too married to sexual norms, gender norms. Um, and that I want to kind of explore a world where none of that exists. There are no preconceived notions. There are no prejudices. We're just in this weird world where sexual, where, where, where sexual structures just don't exist and we are what we are. And I'm like, Okay, I get that that's kind of feels well, like what you're trying to get at, at least with two out of three of these. And then, but what exactly? So, is your point that if you remove sexual structures from everyday living in society, uh, that okay? So, I'm, I don't, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do a, a Reddit thing on this. I'm not giving anything away by saying what the what I think RMF means because the mm-hmm. the three tales to mention RMF he's a dude but but it's interesting I heard this and I think it would kind of makes sense so the thing that would tie these three together is for me uh, RMF stands for redemption manipulation and faith and all these mm-hmm. all these you can twist around to make work right uh, for the yeah. three things and uh, I don't I didn't really get a explicitly sexual I uh, or uh, fluid moment for these three things, but though I think that's really interesting to look at because I'm sure your type director you ask him what it's about and he's like, what does it mean to you, man? That's what it means, right? So but that's the thing. It's like poor things was about finding your finding your sexual freedom, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right. That's what, that's what he was going for with poor things. And he that was super easy that. to see. And this one yeah, it's yeah. not easy it's to like see at all. Barbie for dummies. <laughs> Here, I'm not sure I, I keep I'm gonna let you finish your point. Like, yeah. I don't know it's there. You just acknowledge that it's there. It's present. I don't know what the fuck he's saying about it, though. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't know if he has. Uh, it, you're right. Like it could be one of those things that he doesn't have much to say. He's just doing his Yorgos thing, which is weirding you the fuck out. Because because <laughs> there were several times might, in this. He might, be like, he might not have an editorial point of view. He might just be presenting it. And you're right. It might just be one of those whatever you make of make of this lack of sexually structured world what you want of it. I just wanted to show you what the world would look like if we took it away. They were, like, ugh, I man. want to mention there are very funny parts of this movie. Uh, people, mm-hmm. they were yeah, either... Very, you, very, very funny. You, yeah, very funny parts in there. Was people laughing out loud or people that didn't want there's to laugh, this, but they did. <laughs> yeah, like, there's this part where this girl goes through a windshield, totally fucking laugh my ass off. I was just like, ha, no, ha, I, I generally it. speaking, laugh when women go through windshields to begin with. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, uh um but no, he's right. really smart actually, really, really hateful. <laughs> all right. Can I actually have a talk about this movie for a second cuz like I oh, you, like sure. a minute. Yeah, sorry. Go for all it. All right, cool. It's all right. I'll, I'll just sit here on my own podcast and not no, go, no. <laughs> like No, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll mute myself. Okay. It's only been it's only been 17 minutes. But that's okay. Um <laughs> 506,000 minutes. <laughs> All right. I did like the way the structure of the film. I did like the way that goes. I love a good, like, Twilight Zone kind of movie. I'm a huge yeah. Twilight Zone guy. I, I love the stuff like that. Um, the thing that just, what? I don't know if it's like the aura of the movie or the feel of the movie, mm-hmm. but like something of it just didn't make me, like, sit well. And I, <laughs> I couldn't just get, I couldn't get comfortable watching it. And I tried so hard, especially when uh, I really love the third act. I really <laughs> love, like, this movie is like the living embodiment of when it is of when a sexual predator has to introduce himself to the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like, like, <laughs> yes, so yes, I like, Hi, I'm I would... Hester, and I just need to tell you that I've been in prison for sexually so, molested kids. N- n- when you, <laughs> I when live you, there. We said didn't sit right. That is exactly a, a, a your ghost movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna feel cringy and kind of, uh, that is. 
That's, that's, Thank you for letting me know you live no, here. No, no, no. Go away, that's you're gross. Thing. I like the feeling of cringing up. I just didn't yeah. have any, like, I, there's no draw to it. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. no, like, nothing yeah. of the movie made me feel like I need to even see this story. Like yeah. it, it, it didn't have no urgency to it. it. Didn't have like the way the storytelling was. Just didn't make me feel like uh, that they actually wanted to tell me this story. It made me feel like I was watching something that nobody wants to talk about ever. And I think that's kind of where this movie will go in history. Like it will just I, go I, where nobody will talk about I, it ever. I, I disagree. I, like, I disagree. By the way, I think that people will talk about. It. Well, I like I like the first one, and you know, I like the story of this guy who gives his entire. He's clearly like submissive to Mm -hmm. this dominant person and when he and then when he's excised from this small community does everything in his power including destroy his own soul in order to get back and find that love and this throttle Mm -hmm. i'm fine with that i'm fine with the last one where you know let's acknowledge that there's a degree of supernaturalness that exists and some people can bring back the dead from from bring back the dead fine and again we have this person who is excised from the community through a rape um, and has to like find her way back and, you know, and be redeemed. I'm fine with all that. I'm not fine with the middle one, which I feel like didn't really fit where it's not only supernatural, but now there's aliens and she, you know, an Emma Stone, you know, did a body snatcher thing. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching here? Like, honestly, like give me two hours of just the first and the third one. And I'm fine with the yeah. movie. That's second I agree. one. That so second one was just- movie. It, it was just like I I I, I was enjoying the first one. I, I I'm not gonna so, lie, I the, really the, enjoyed the first story. But then the second one came on, and I was just that's where I think I lost the feeling of the disconnect. I mean, so, who like, doesn't I, want to see like, Willem Dafoe fuck Jesse Plemons? I did uh, after that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 um, yeah. sploosh, man, <laughs> sploosh. Uh, but but uh, so here's the th- making me look comfortable. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the thing is about they they started the movie out with the with the best short first. Which probably wasn't the yeah. was the, probably wasn't uh, I would have done it differently, but the best short is the first one. I could have seen that actually turn into a full feature with more backstory in that one. Cause I, but I got a question: Can you call it a short when it's like forty five minutes each one? Okay, <laughs> forty minutes. That's each. not a short, dude. That's a whole short, fucking movie. Long. I've I've seen movies that were shorter than that at goddamn Panic Fest. <laughs> 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 like, 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 but and they're I, called full length features. So th- this <laughs> like, thing is totally uneven. It's uh, it's uncomfortable. But I do think that um, I'm glad it exists. I really am glad that, that I could see this in mainstream theater and they give you a something to make it. I I appreciate what he's doing a lot with this. It's not a perfect movie, mm-hmm. but uh, I love that it exists. Honestly, uh, I think I think okay. I love the idea of it. I love the, I love, you know, the way it was going. And I love movies that give you the, the three different, you know, different like Anth- anthology movies, stories yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I just don't think this was good done. Well, I just, I mean, the acting was good. That, that's what I got. But like, just the writing just seemed like. Okay. Was um, awesome. I, pr- I promise I won't exclude Neil from this, but I am curious because I, no, I wouldn't, I would bet money that Chris knows what I'm talking about, but I'm not entirely sure about Neil. Mm-hmm. This movie reminded me of Waking Life. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Neil knows Waking yeah. Life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, can of darkly Waking Life. Anything <laughs> that they animate over. Come on, dude. I, do you okay. see what I read? Anything that's animated, I fucking watch. Except for this <laughs> wasn't quite as talky as Waking Life, which is all talking and mm-hmm. rotoscope, but like it had that. It had that sort of waxing philosophical for the sake of doing so feeling to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was trying, okay, but what are you saying with this movie? And I guess I'm married to the idea that you have to say something. Um, something I talk about all the time. Like, like you know, Robert and I have gotten into fist fights over um, certain movies. Where, like, oh, like Halloween Kills, where I, you know, where I was like, yeah, it's a dumb movie. And it's not well made, but at least it had something to say. And I would rather be yeah. something nothing. This is like the opposite of Halloween Kills, <laughs> where it's like, I don't think it's saying anything. Good it's acting. really well made. <laughs> to me, this is the uh, eleven. We're called the. That's anth- awesome. I I did not think Halloween Kills. The opposite of Halloween Kills was how this movie. So actually, was I, heard it, yeah. I, I, I heard so I heard something. Why you bring me on? I am so glad I am here for this. I heard it. I heard it. It's an interesting call. Someone called this the anti Wes Anderson. Like like in that, <laughs> which is yeah. There's this is free whimsy, but it's also it's 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 heartless, which is 
what Yorgos is known for. Like, like people were like, mm-hmm. this is something new. And it is something new, but to me, it's 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 pretty on par for the movies he makes. You know, like yeah, I was gonna say it's very Jim Jarmusch. Yeah, 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 was any- well, like, all three of them seem like they hate white people, but like in different ways. Where like <laughs> you're right, Wes Anderson hates white people with whimsy. Jim <laughs> Jim Jim Jarmusch hates white people in the way that a scientist oh, might hate God. the experiment that they're working on, and Yorgos Yorgos seems to just like I don't know, like it's like he hates white people, but he doesn't quite know why. Like so, like <laughs> I don't know what his problem is. But I mean, I I, I didn't get to hate white people in this one, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure, of course, horrible things happen to white people in all those movies for sure, but. Uh, <laughs> They certainly did, Ollie. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I um... see. see I, I feel this movie is like the photo that I just put up in the corner. Like I feel like <laughs> it's supposed to be whimsical, but at the same time, it makes people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and I think that, that did definitely uh, make you feel uncomfortable. I had a friend next to me who there's one scene where he was literally go like, like that. Um, and uh, I remember when I said the same thing happened to the lobster to a stranger who sat right next to me who was making awful noises near the end of the lobster. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is what I remember a Yorgos movie being. Um, mm-hmm. And I can tell this is, this is a very divisive movie. People hate it. Some people love it too much. And I'm actually kind of, I'm on the, I like it more than I dislike it. But like it, when we talk about the things, it's really fucking long. Um, there are things that meander, and there's things that just didn't fucking need to be there, at all. Like it didn't add on to the story. So in the second, the second stories, to, to, to put that the best one first was, I mean, it made people stay longer than they should have, maybe <laughs> if they were gonna walk out. You know, I don't, know. I don't, I don't know if the first one was the best one. I mean, maybe by a degree or so, but yeah. not wildly the best. Um, the third one. I think definitely had its merits. Mm-hmm. Like, I she the the she gets drugged, raped, goes back to her community in the third one. She is soundly rejected, um, and then she goes out looking for a way back in. She finds it. I don't quite remember how it ends. I know she does the stupid dance at, during the credits, <laughs> which is great. Um, but uh, how does the third one end? Does, does the chick end up living or? Um, uh, or th- I know was, she doesn't make it back to the community. It was unclear, uh, but uh, okay. yeah, but uh, there's also a, a mid credit scene if you guys stayed for that, which I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I stayed oh, for one the guy time. eating the hot dog check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I don't even know why. The, why does that matter? I don't know. That didn't matter. I was like, <laughs> it was. I was like, yeah, I kind of walked out. I was I like, stayed, I, I always read to see if there's a post credit scene on every fucking movie before I go see it because who knows what has a post credit like, and. I was like, okay, it says there's a mid credit scene, and that happens, and I'm like, well, no, you that, mean I was here? That for, was dead. That I was, was here for two hours and forty minutes of my life that I can't get back. That was the way to stick I'm a, to watch a guy eat a fucking the, hot dog. There was a guy. To, that was that, that was the way to have RMF in every suit segment because he was in the first one as as the guy uh, that was supposed to run over the second one. He was the guy who was flying the airplane, and that was the third one eating a sandwich. So was, wait, 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 sir, <laughs> sir, are you explaining the movie I just watched? I'm just telling you why he's in it. I was just telling you why he's in it. I know why he was in it. I, I, I got the idea. I got the feel. I got exactly what it was supposed to do. I just didn't give a shit. <laughs> it was just like, okay, um, cool. Yeah, okay, I'm supposed to feel this here. Awesome. Right. <laughs> like, like I got that point. It was just like I, I, I totally have to agree with Mark with the whole Halloween kills thing. I mean, that is the best <laughs> effort you can possibly go. At this point, I just say cut it. Let's we're done. Let's yeah, well, yeah, what's your score on this? <laughs> um, I'll give it a, I'll give it a three point three. I'll, okay. I'll give it. I, I love the acting. I love the. I did love the scenery and stuff like that. Uh, I I'm glad I got a movie I can fall asleep to that comes out in like two months. Um, <laughs> it'll be great. It'll be awesome. Okay, I'll put it on the TV. I'm sure I'm gonna fall asleep to this movie many times. Mark? But uh, besides that, Mark, where are you in this? Give it a pass. Yeah. On a pass fail scale. Okay. You pass this. Okay. Give it a pass. <laughs> that works. That works. That works okay. Uh, you know, I'm going to study scales. 
<laughs> and I come up with a different one for every time you guys bring me on. I love I'm never that. Doing I love more. it. Um, my score in this is a four. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's a four for me. Uh, I found a lot to like about this. I'm a big fan. I mean, I really love Yorgo Santamos, but, but again, it's not for everyone. And I, I had friends tell me this was brilliant. It's not brilliant, but it's good. And that's where I'm uh, with the kinds of kindness. Uh, Neil, I'm on Rotten Tomatoes. What is that audience score for kinds of kindness? Uh, 38. 51%. 51%. Yeah, what? That's, yeah, that's fifty-one. Okay, I, I thought it, I thought it'd go less than fifty because, like, mm-hmm. literally, because it's uh, you know, it's it's hot, it's you know, summer season, and people walked in. Like, I mean, seriously, I saw people walk out of this theater. I I, I really haven't seen that for movies, man. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm probably gonna go when I have. And it was like it was thirty minutes in. Like they didn't. It wasn't just like they were. You know, yeah. like thirty minutes in, they're just like we're done. It's it's gonna make people uncomfortable. Neil, what is the correct score for kinds of kindness? Um, ninety-one, seventy-three percent, which is probably what I expected. Um, the, yeah, I, I was, I was trying to, I thought it would be like the way opposite on that. <laughs> so the quick consensus is a cold-hearted triptych brimming with caustic wit. Kinds of kindness is Yorgo Lanthimos as most misanthropic and bitingly funny. Yeah, and he hates people for sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> only white people. Uh, only uh, white people. And 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 uh, according hey. to his audience, so. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, hey, as an audience. Us white people have a hero, and we love him because if you say his name, he appears. Okay. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm going to read a bad review and a good review. This is from Tina Catalyst of Beyond the Cinerama Dome. She says, even with the air the aspects that could have benefited from tightening up, there's still something exciting about a film like Kinds of Kindness being heavily promoted and available to catch movie theater goers which I basically said earlier. And this is from Edwin Arden of Ashland. He says, Lanthimus is back to his old tricks and we fellow sickos are the better for it. I'm not the type of person that we should watch a fucked up movies you're a sicko. But maybe, <laughs> maybe. And uh, Marco, you know, I was trying to find fat guy at the movies. And I couldn't find his review for this one. So, Aww. I know. Was this too much movie for Kevin Carr, fat guy at the movies? Yeah. Uh, Neil, do, uh, there's a, there's a, I don't, Neil doesn't get the red tomatoes that much, but there's a guy who gives his reviews and his fat guy at the movies, and he's, yeah, I think that Mark and him have a. Oh, I know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Neil, yeah. Robert, I just tried, years ago, I, I Robert just tried and I picked date. a fight with him. A couple years ago, Robert Winfrey and I picked a fight with him on Damn You Hollywood, and we have never let up. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I want, yes. I, I want to, I want to see that cage match, honestly, <laughs> which one Mark and fat guy at the movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's less Hell of a cave match and more of Mark the curve bump like being from American <laughs> History X. <laughs> All right, uh, but yeah, that was kinds of kindness, guys. If you guys want to, uh, first one's available on Netflix, easy to watch, and it's it's a good one. And then you can go to the theaters and uh, spend two hours or forty five minutes feeling uncomfortable. You can go see kinds of kindness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kinds of kindness, not a movie to bring a girl to. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no. No, I, definitely I, not. I saw a row, row of dudes get in and they were just like, and that I could tell they were a film chat. So they're super excited for this movie. I was excited film to see chat. it too, but, um, but, uh, I and, saw film chat. Yeah, open I was up excited. I, was excited. I really um, wanted to see it. Yeah. We saw this over uh quiet place. Day one. Mark, should we see that? A uh, quiet place. Day one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I mentioned this on my stream earlier. Yeah. Uh, somebody had asked me about it. Quiet, our review of A Quiet Place Day One is it is absolutely adequate, serviceable filmmaking. Okay, Neil, take away Joe Henry. I want to see your beautiful face. <laughs> what? I want to see your beautiful face, Neil. You say Joe why, Henry, why? he appears like Candyman. I know. <clears throat> why, Chris? Uh, Neil, I, I, have to... I just got to. <laughs> Neil is fucking <laughs> done with you. No, <laughs> he is over it. I'm sorry. I, I got. I got. I pretty much got stoned just a second ago. I, anyway, no um, shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. But anyway, you um, don't say. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but uh, so what did you want? I was uh, Mark. Uh, do you want to like uh, promote your shit real quick? That's yeah, I would love to. Okay, go for it. Um, all right. No, so no, clips no. of <laughs> clips of my show, no, skits of my them. don't live in the doing DBS. Fun things, um, karaoke, nude or otherwise, or with my children, or nude or otherwise, can be found. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's a line, brother. <laughs> what? Um, no. I didn't say who was or where. Uh, uh, at right. Mark Bradley. 
<laughs> my TikTok is at Mark Radledge, um on TikTok. I currently doing a live. This whole show I was live streaming on there for what that's worth. Mm -hmm. um, I do live streams on there when I watch boxing or I'm never watching Money in the Bank. I'll do a live stream then. Also, like I said, I do 10, 10 or plus now because you can do up to 30 minutes clips of uh, any one of my shows, which can be found on W2M Network. Um, we have a YouTube page at W2M Network. Uh, that's where all of my stuff is. Source material, uh, games to the max, all of it right there on YouTube. We're also on Twitch and X and the Rattledge and Broadcasting Network is the name of my stuff. That's on Facebook. We have a landing page. W2Mnet.com is where I post all of our shows with pretty pictures. You can get the audio there. If you're one of these weird people who doesn't watch videos, but you would like to hear the podcast the way it was meant to be yes. on weekly audio, we are the Rattledge and Broadcasting Network. That's R-A-D-U-L-I-C-H. You can see it up on the screen uh, in broadcasting. And we are that on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcast catcher that you use. I'm done talking now. Why? All right. You find some news, <laughs> you find news on Suck and news on Suck.net where X and GS Podcast and Instagram GS Podcast. We're on TikTok. We do movies on Ed Movies Don't Suck. Uh, we have a feature on Patreon called So News Don't Suck Podcast. We're on Twitter. And I just said that. Uh, if you go to Bonfire, So News Don't Suck and you, you'll find our shirts on there. I think Neil uh, put us on T Public. So you search our name. We'll probably show up on there, right? Movies Don't Suck and Yes, yeah, I'm on. I, I got, yeah, I got some t shirts on T Public, but man, I just keep on making ones and I just don't know if I should put it under. I have a different name on there and I don't know if I should put it under movies that yeah. don't suck or under. It's, it's under Blackwood Productions. Look up T Public Blackwood Productions. You can find all the t shirts there. I got liners. I got uh, blues. I got <laughs> blues brothers. I have stuff from the craft. I have stuff like that. Hey, I'm trying to advertise you, dick. I'm not. Don't I'm be not, an asshole. I'm not, I'm not. I'll go to your house. I know where the fuck you live, bro. It's only a three hour drive. <laughs> I, I, I will I, come I, over I, there. I will pet your chickens. I will feed your dog and I'll give you a hug. Anyway, what are you um, doing to his chickens? You should not. <laughs> no. Man, man alone. God, dang it. Don't bring up my childhood, right. like, and, um, man, seriously. And, uh, find some, <laughs> subscribe to YouTube, like us, all that places, share as well, all that shit that, that people to tell you. Neil, if you got a small business, what are we, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> if you got a small business, let us know. Email us, message us, uh, send a pigeon, whatever. We like to advertise you right here on this podcast to our thousands of listeners and our millions of followers. Yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, you good, are you guys good to get out of here? And you know what the fuck Yeet. is you bank? Uh, you guys good? Yeah, good. Let's get it done. Uh, okay. That's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Some Do. My name's Neil. And I'm Chris. And I'm Mark. <laughs> and remember, guys, no matter how hard you try in life, remember your card can't go anywhere if you put a banana up the tailpipe. Have a good day. Yeah.